Hello, dear students. How are you? I hope you are keeping fine by the grace of Almighty Allah. After many days, we are meeting. Uh, before the vacation, we were doing English second paper, and we did some grammatical items. Have you forgotten? No, I don't think so, uh, because we did it well. Okay, today we are going to uh, discuss about another very important topic that is a transformation of sentences. Transformation of sentence is very, very important for you. Uh, it is set as uh, question number six in the question paper and it carries 10 marks. So it is really very important. Uh, I will do the uh, rules first before uh, going directly into the transformation of sentences. Let us uh, discuss about the rules. What is a transformation of sentence? What type of sentences are there, etc. Okay, now I will share the screen. If you have any problem, you will tell me. Dear students, can you see the board? Transformation yes, of sentences, can you see it? Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Okay, thank you. So, today our topic is on transformation of sentences. You know, there are two ways to change. Transformation means to transform, to change something, that is, uh, to change from one sentence into another. It can be done in two ways, that is transformation of sentences and conversion of sentences. But conversion is different. Uh, I'm giving you an example like, he's my friend and you are told to make it negative. So you can say, he's not my friend. This is conversion of sentences. That means in conversion, the meaning will be changed. But in transformation, you cannot change the meaning. That is, he is my friend and you are told to make it negative, you will have to write, he is not my enemy. He is not my enemy. This is transformation of sentences. And he is not my friend. That is, you have changed the meaning of this conversion of sentences. Okay, we are going to the next slide. Now let us come to know about sentence and its classification. Dear boys, please write all these things. And after the class, I will also give you the link so that you can download it later on and you can take it again. Okay, sentence, according to function, sentence, according to function, a sentence can be divided into five types. According to function, a sentence can be divided into five types. One is assertive, Interpretative, objective, and exclamatory. Uh, external sound is coming, so I'm actually uh, putting you in unmute form. If you have anything to ask me, just unmute a mute form. I'm keeping you in mute form, and if you have anything to ask me, just uh, make yourself unmute and then ask me uh, anything. Okay. A sentence can be divided into five types, assertive, interrogative, imperative, optative, and exclamatory. We know what is assertive sentence. Assertive sentence is a, is a statement. He's a very good boy. We are the students of Dhaka Residential Model College. These are all assertive sentence. Then interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence is asking question. When you ask anybody anything that is interrogative sentence, Suppose in the very beginning of this class, I asked you, how are you, dear boys? This is the example of an interrogative sentence. Do you go outside during this uh, corona pandemic? This is also the example of interrogative sentence. Then the third one is imperative sentence. Imperative sentence means any order, request, command, advice. Please don't go out. This is the example of imperative sentence. Listen to me, example of imperative sentence. Don't make any sound. This is the example of imperative sentence. Then opted, fourth one is optative. 
optative sentence. In optative sentence, we wish or pray something. Like, may God save us from this coronavirus. Actually, nowadays, whatever the example comes to my mind is related with coronavirus. Oh God, save us long. May our country live long. May God bless you. All these are example of optative sentence. Then the last one, exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentence is exclamation. When we become surprised, when we become astonished at something, how beautiful the weather is, how dangerous coronavirus is, what a terrible scene it is. All these are examples of exclamatory sentence. Then, according to structure, a sentence can be divided into three types, simple, complex, and compound. Simple, complex, and compound. I think the students face a little bit problem in this sector, that is simple, complex, and compound. Well, while answering a transformation of sentence, you will have to face a different type of activities like uh, from assertive to interrogative or assertive to imperative or uh, assertive to exclamatory and vice versa, that is exclamatory to assertive. And another form is simple to complex or simple to compound, then complex to compound or compound to simple, etc. And then another type that is a change of voice and uh, degree comparison of degree. These types of things are set in the question. Okay, we are proceeding to the next slide. Do you have any problem in this slide or uh, up to this what I have said? Have you understood? Okay. Yes, miss. Next slide. But before talking about simple complex compound, I like to tell you about the clause because without clause, you won't be able, we won't be able to understand what is simple, what is complex and what is compound. Now let us discuss what is clause. Well, clause is group of words which has a subject and a finite verb. Clause is a group of words in a sentence. There are some parts. In one part, there will be a subject and a finite verb. Now you can ask one ma'am, what is finite verb? Okay, finite verb is that verb which depends on the subject. I'm giving you an example. He wants me to go there. He wants me to go there. Here, the subject is he, and he is third person singular number. And then we have used the verb once. Look. Observe carefully, once, this is the verb. And we have used is once because this depends on the subject he. He is third person singular, that is why we have used is. So once is the finite verb. There is another verb, you see? There is another verb that is go, but this verb doesn't depend on the subject. So this verb go is not the finite verb. In this sentence, once is the finite verb. So finite verb is that verb that depends on the subject. If here the subject was I, then I want to do the, do the work. I want to do the work. Or if the subject was different, you, then you want me to go there. So the verb which depends on the subject is called a finite verb. Okay, so in a clause, there will be a subject and a finite verb. So definitely he wants me to go there. It is a clause. Again, clause is of three types. There are three types of clause. One is principal clause that is independent. It does not depend on anybody. Number two, subordinate clause. It is dependent. It depends on other. And number three, coordinate clause that is independent. Coordinate clause is independent and it is added by some coordinate conjunctions like and, but, or, not only but also, and so yet. These are coordinating conjunctions. Okay, I have given two examples. I think you will get clear picture about the clause. Look, though there was lockdown, Many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. 
this is a sentence. Here I have used two different colors to make you understand. There is one part, though there was lockdown, many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. This is another part. The red part, in this part, you see there is a subject that is there. There is a subject and another verb is there that is was. There was lockdown. This verb was is finite verb because it depends on the subject there. There was lockdown. So this is a clause. And just think, you have uttered only though there was lockdown and you won't say anything. You won't say any further. Is the, is the sentence or is the meaning clear? No, if, if we just say, though there was lockdown and we do not say anything, then the sentence is not complete and the meaning is not clear. The meaning is in, the sentence is incomplete and the meaning is vague. It is not clear, unclear. But if we say many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home, then the meaning is clear. Though there was lockdown, many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. Again, suppose you do not utter though there was lockdown. You just say many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. This part clearly expresses the full meaning. If we say many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home, it is a complete sentence. And here is also a verb and a subject. Many people of Bangladesh is the subject and did not stay. Stay is verb. So did not stay is a verb. So uh, this is a clause and this clause is called principal clause because this clause does not depend on the other clause. So the clause which expresses its meaning clearly without depending on other clause is the principal clause. The clause which does not depend on other clause to express its meaning is called principal clause. And this clause that is the red colored clause, this is this is called subordinate clause because this clause depends on the other clause. Without depending on other, this clause cannot express its meaning fully. So though there was lockdown is the subordinate clause and many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. This is principal clause. Another example, there was lockdown. I have omitted though. There was lockdown, but many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. Many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. Here you see there was lockdown is a clause and it is principal clause because this clause does not depend on other. There was lockdown and many people of Bangladesh did not stay at home. This is another principal clause. So I have used, I have used but and but is coordinating conjunction. So there are two principal clauses connected with a coordinating conjunction, but. Now, let us go to the next slide. Now we will come to know about what is simple sentence, what is complex sentence, what is compound sentence. So up to now, what we have come to know, that is what is a sentence and a sentence, the classification of sentence that according to meaning and according to uh, According to meaning, it can be divided. It, according to function, it can be divided into five types. And according to structure, it can be divided into three types. Then we have learned about the clause. Clause is a group of words which has a subject and a, a finite verb. I'm repeating because uh, some of you have joined just now. And uh, there are uh, three types of clauses, principal clause, subordinate clause, coordinate clause. And I have given example of principal clause, subordinate clause and coordinating conjunction, then we will proceed to simple sentence, complex sentence, and compound sentence. This is very important because if you do not understand what is simple, what is complex, and what is compound, then how you will transform. Because the, in the question, there will be only di the direction like uh, simple, make it simple. So first, you will have to identify which sentence it is. First one is simple sentence. The characteristics or the features of simple sentence is it will have only one subject plus one finite verb, more like a clause. I have given an example, he is an honest man. Here you see he is a subject and is, 
is an is a finite verb so this is a simple sentence in a simple sentence boys remember in a simple sentence there is only one subject and one verb one finite verb this is a simple sentence i'm writing a sentence no no because of, because of illness he could not attend the class because of illness he could not attend the class here you see the sentence is longer than the previous one because of illness he could not attend the class in this long sentence there is only one subject he because because of illness okay suppose if i write because of his illness still it is a simple sentence because it is not verb here there is only his is not subject there is only one subject that is he he could not attend the class so it is definitely a simple illness he could not he could not attend the class okay then then complex sentence in complex sentence one principal clause plus one or more subordinate clause in principal clause yeah. in complex sentence one principal clause plus one or more subordinate clause i am giving example as he did not come look at this sentence as he was ill he did not come as he was ill here is one part i am coloring it he did not come okay as he was ill it is a clause because as he was ill is a part of this sentence and in this part there is a subject he and there is a finite verb that is was but if we just say as he was ill then we did we do not say or we won't say anything then the sentence is incomplete as he was ill so this is a subordinate clause and he did not come this clause is principal clause because it is full meaning this clause does not depend on the previous clause that is as he was ill clause so this is an example of complex sentence because in the complex in a complex sentence there will be one principal clause and one or more subordinate clause then the third one is compound sentence in compound sentence there will be two or more principal clause and there will also be a coordinating conjunction i have shown you which one which ones are the coordinating conjunctions these one these are and but not only but also and so yet these are coordinating conjunctions so i have used and this is a coordinating conjunctions and you see he was ill this is a principal clause he was ill it is complete its meaning is complete you can express the complete meaning and and so actually and so i have used and so as the coordinating conjunction and he did not come it is another principal clause so this is a compound sentence in simple i'm repeating in simple sentence one finite verb one subject he is an honest man in complex sentence there is one principal clause plus one or more subordinate clause as he was ill he did not come in compound sentence two or more principal clause and a coordinating conjunction so in this sentence though there was lockdown many people of bangladesh did not stay at home boys please tell me what type of sentence is this is it simple complex or compound unmute yourself complex. unmute yourself complex. and then answer is complex very good it is complex sentence though there was lockdown many people of bangladesh did not stay at home this is a complex sentence good and the letter one there was lockdown but many people of bangladesh did not stay at home is compound sentence compound sentence very good excellent okay so you have understood what is simple sentence what is complex and what is compound now 
I will discuss about some rules. Actually, there are lots of rules, but if we want to memorize all these things, then our memory on permit. So I have written or I have prepared total 11 rules for you, just 11 rules. And through this or by these 11 rules, you will be able to do more or less all the transformation related to simple complex and compound. It's very easy, but you must follow the rules very carefully and you must uh, adopt it and you can write it several times so that you can remember it later on. <clears throat> After the class, I will give you I will give you the link also. Okay, the first one, simple, complex, and compound. Rule number one: if there is two dot dot two in simple sentence, like he is too disciplined to break any rule. He is too disciplined to break any rule. It is simple sentence, like right? Because there is only one subject, he, and there is only one verb, is. So it is a simple sentence. So if there is two dot dot two in a simple sentence, to make it complex, we must use so dot dot that. So dot dot that. That is the answer will be, he is so disciplined that he cannot break any rule. He is so disciplined that he cannot break any rule. In simple sentence, he is too disciplined to break any rule. To make it complex, we have written he is so disciplined that he cannot break any rule. Now, let us analyze this sentence, how it has become a complex sentence. He is so disciplined. This is a clause. He is so disciplined that he cannot break any rule. That he cannot break any rule is subordinate clause, he is so disciplined, it is principal clause. So in this sentence, there is one principal clause, one subordinate clause, that is why it has become a complex sentence. Then to make it compound, we will use very plus and. To transform any simple sentence which has two dot dot two, we will use very plus and to make it compound. He is very disciplined and he cannot break the rule. He is very disciplined and he cannot break the rule. Write the things, my, bo my dear boys, write the things. Number one, simple, two dot dot two, he is too disciplined to break any rule. Complex, so dot dot that. Is so disciplined that he cannot break any rule and compound very plus and he is very disciplined and he cannot break any rule. Have you finished? Okay, Shafaid is writing. It's okay. Okay, we are proceeding to number two, rule number two. Two oblique in order to plus verb. Look at the structure carefully. Two oblique in order to plus verb. I went there to meet you. Well, boys, if the sentence is like that, I went to the garden, that is, there is no verb after two, then this rule will not be applicable. This rule will be suitable and applicable for only that type of sentence where there is two plus verb. Here, you see two plus verb, meet is the verb. So I went there to meet you. This is a very important rule. 
you all you will always find question following this rule in ssc test pre test in every exam i went there to meet you so to make it this this is a simple sentence because there is only one subject i to make it complex we must use so that i went there so that i could meet you we know the structure of so that and so dot dot that in so dot dot that or so that we must use can subject plus can or could if the sentence is in past form then could and if the sentence is in present form then can and since can and could both are modal verbs so we must use the present form of verb that is why meet we have used meet so if there is a to or in order to plus verb in a simple sentence to make it complex we must use so that that is i went there so that i could meet you and in compound sentence to transform it to transform a simple sentence having two obligate in order to plus verb and a complex sentence having so that we must use want to plus and so and or and so no problem we must use want to this is exceptional while checking copies we find many mistakes um, that the students make for transforming simple and complex sentence into compound especially in this case that is two plus verb the answer will be i wanted to meet you i wanted to meet you and so i went there i wanted to meet you one plus two one two i wanted to meet you and so i went there actually there is a purpose there is an aim why i went there i went there so that i could meet you because i wanted to meet you okay then number 3 another important rule because of due to owing to for because of due to owing to for if you find these words these things in simple sentence like due to illness i could not come due to means because of i was ill because of illness i could not come to make it complex we must use as seems because as i was ill i could not come or since i was ill i could not come but for using because you cannot use it in the beginning if you want to use because then the sentence will be i could not come because i was ill that means because will have to be used in the middle of the sentence after 10 minutes our class time will be over and our zoom hour will also be over okay as i was ill i could not come then compound for making it compound we must use and so i was ill and so i could not come i was ill and so i could not come so number 3 because of due to owing to for due to illness i could not come complex as i was ill i could not come and compound and so i was ill and so i could not come i am going to the next slide rule number 4 5 and 6 rule number 4 if you find in spite of or despite in simple sentence in spite of be careful because if you use in spite then you must use of and if you use despite you must not use of so without using of for in spite your number will be deducted and for using of in despite your number will be deducted so in spite of trying hard i failed in spite of trying hard if there is in spite of then always verb plus ing format will have to be used in spite of trying hard i failed and to make it complex 
we must use though or although. You can choose anything, any anyone. You can use though or you can use although. Though I tried hard, I failed. Or although I tried hard, I failed. You see, in simple sentence, there is only one subject, I. And in complex sentence, there are two clauses. Though I tried hard, it is subordinate clause and I failed is the principal clause. So this is a complex sentence. And in compound sentence, you will have to use but or yet. I tried hard, but I failed. I tried hard, it is a principal clause. I failed is another principal clause and but is the coordinating, co coordinating conjunction. So this sentence has become compound. In simple sentence, if there is in spite of or despite, for making it complex, you must use though or although, and for making it compound, you must use but or yet. Then rule number five, by plus gerund. You know what is gerund? Gerund means verb plus ing, which acts like a noun. Uh, well, uh, let me tell you about the difference between gerund and participle, because uh, you uh, face confusion this problem to uh, distinguish between gerund and participle. Gerund is verb plus ing, but it will act like a noun, but participle is verb plus ing, uh, same, but it will act like an adjective. I'm giving you example, like mm, swimming is good, swimming is a good exercise. Here, yes, swimming, we have used verb plus ing, but it is acting like the, it is uh, like a noun, that is, it is acting as the subject, swimming the name of an exercise. Swimming is a good exercise. So, uh, the name of a game. So swimming is gerund here. But participle, uh, I saw a flying bird. What type of bird? Flying bird. Verb plus ing, but it is acting here like an adjective. So flying is participle here. Okay. If there is by plus gerund, that is verb plus ing, I have written in the bracket, if there is verb plus a uh, by plus gerund, example, by writing a letter, you can apply. By writing a letter, you can apply. Here we have used by plus verb plus ing, and it is definitely a simple sentence because there is only one subject, you. Then to make it complex, you must use if plus subject plus affirmative form. If plus subject plus affirmative form. Like if you write a letter, you can apply. If you write a letter, you can apply. Here, if you write a letter, it is subordinate clause because its meaning is not clear. If, I, if we do not use the further clause, that is you can apply. So this is a subordinate clause and you can apply is the principal clause. Thus, it has become a complex sentence. And then to make it compound, you must use imperative plus and. And if we know that to make any imperative sentence, we must use verb at first. That, that is, write a letter and apply. Write a letter and apply. This has become a compound sentence. So verb plus gerund, by writing a letter, you can apply. And the complex is, if you write a letter, you can apply. And the compound is, write a letter and apply. Then, without plus gerund plus verb plus ing, the same thing, but instead of by, there is without. Without plus gerund plus verb plus ing. Without working hard, without working hard, you can't succeed. Without working hard, you can't succeed. This is an example of simple sentence because there is only one subject, you. And to make it complex, you must use if plus subject, plus negative or unless. If plus, if plus subject plus negative. In the previous rule, there was, in the previous rule, there was uh, affirmative format, but because of without, you will have to use negative form. Or you can choose another option that is using unless. I'm giving you example, without working hard, you can't succeed. If you don't work hard, so after if plus subject plus negative, we have changed the sentence into negative format. 
if you don't work hard, you can't succeed. And if you want to use unless, then the answer will be like that. Unless you work hard, you can't succeed. Because if in the uh, if there is unless, you cannot use a negative in the same clause. That is, if you, you, you can use unless you work hard. You cannot use unless you don't work hard. That will be wrong. So unless you work hard, you can't succeed. It is also correct. <clears throat> or if you don't work hard, you can't succeed. Then the compound format for compound, you will have to use imperative plus or. In the previous rule, you used imperative plus n, but in the present rule, in rule number six, you will have to use imperative plus or. That is work hard or you can't succeed. Work hard or you can't succeed. Only two minutes, two and two minutes uh, left. So okay, another rule, rule number seven. Simple, complex, and compound. Simple rule number seven. In if there is in during at the time of or at that is about time in during at the time of or at he came here at four that means four o'clock he came here at four to make it complex you must use when because here we are talking about time and when means time he came here when it was four he came here when it was four and to make it compound, we must use it plus and. It was four and he came. It was four and he came. Rule number eight, verb plus ing plus subject. Okay, in rule number five, here you see verb plus ing, but there was by plus verb plus ing, but in rule number eight, there is no by. There is only verb plus ing plus subject. Example, closing the door, I went back to work. Here, verb plus ing plus subject, we are using closing the door, I went back to work. If there is by, then the rule is different. To make it complex, we must use when or after. If there is verb plus ing, then we must use when or after. I went back to work after I had closed the door. I went back to work after I had closed the door. And the last one is to make it compound, we must use and. I closed the door and went back to work. We have just less than one minute. So uh, with uh, rule number nine,